Hey gang, this is a video that I hoped to never have to make in my life, but right now it feels absolutely necessary. We'll get to the topic of the title of this video in just a second, but first and foremost, I have to say this. There will be links in the description below for the ongoing effort to restabilize Western North Carolina, including Asheville, the town my family and I are from. Make no mistakes, I plan to keep on making videos about TTRPGs because for the time being, that's all we have. I'm just going to read my script because I'm having a hard time getting through this. This video is going to have two separate topics. The first dealing with a very apropos title based on the literal situation I lived through when making the incredibly difficult decision to leave Asheville. If you want to watch that part of the video, then go to this timestamp. The second topic is to talk about what's not being covered in the news and articles concerning one of the most complex and understated crises that has ever happened in the history of our nation. And I don't think that that's hyperbole to say so. If you want to see that discussion, then watch from this timestamp on. Either way, thanks everyone for your continued support through this unprecedented time. So first off, let's talk about the topic that is the title of this video, and probably the reason that you found my channel in the first place. TTRPGs. It's easy enough to have a theoretical idea of what games you might grab and take with you in an extreme crisis. I mean, come on, we all have our Island 5 records, our top 10 TV shows, but if you were really hit with a situation where you only had a small backpack to leave with your collection of tabletop role-playing games, which would you choose? But for me, as of Sunday, September 27th, 2024, that was a very real situation. And I'm going to show you the books I brought along with me. One of my very first choices, right off the shelf, were Cairn and Knave. These are some of the most lightweight RPGs I own. They were barely going to make a dent in the backpack, and there's some really easy systems to grasp. I was also going to stay with some family members, including my parents, who have never played any tabletop role-playing games, and I thought, if there was ever a time to try to get them to play some role-playing games, why not now? And so, Two of my top choices were these because they're really easy for new players to understand. There's not a ton of rules in these. In fact, neither is longer than like 20 pages. So Karen and Knave were obvious choices. And along with those, I couldn't help but grab Knave too, just because for the bounty of tables and inspiration with inside this book. And then I started to move on to foundational RPGs that I think needed to be present if I could never get back to my other books. And that's when I grabbed Old School Essentials. To me, the layout is so clean and it's so close to a basic edition of Dungeons & Dragons that I thought, I need to have a staple in my pile. So Old School Essentials was a no-brainer. Again, I'm not even sure if or when I'll get to play these games, but I wanted to have them along with me in case I wanted to talk about them in the future, and especially if my family ever gets to try any of these. Okay, and we have one final book from the lightweight book section, and that's Morkborg. Morgborg is just a game that's full of so much character and simplicity that it deserved to be in my pile. I could run this game in my sleep. Its rules are so bare minimum that it really deserves a place among all these other lightweight systems. And while I don't think that my family will be particularly interested in the flavors of Morgborg, I brought it along for a little bit of inspiration and because I like the adventure that's in the back of the book. Plus it's just so chock full of flavor and an interesting layout that I thought is worth adding to the pile and it's so lightweight, it's a smaller book. I mean, look at the size of this thing. Okay, and now moving on to the somewhat thicker section of books, I went ahead and grabbed my copy of Index Card RPG. This game has so many different genres baked into it, everything from strange western, modern, futuristic sci-fi, and even good classic fantasy, that it just was a no-brainer to add to the pile as well. And plus, if I ever want to run heroic fantasy in the near future, this is my preferred system for that. It's just one of those games that's so easy to grok and run, and it's full of so much good GM advice. It's as close as I dared get to a game like 5e in a compact size, and I'm pretty sure no one will be surprised at my next choice on this list if you've watched any of my other videos, because it's Mazes. Mazes is just one of those games that's so genre-defying that it deserved a place among my survival backpack. It's a game that has none of the classic trappings of tabletop role-playing games, and I thought it would be really easy for my family members who just aren't gamers to pick up on. Things like only having to roll one dice, only having to make a couple of decisions in character creation, and jumping right into the action and keeping things moving along at a steady pace. It's a great game for the casual player or for one-shots. 
And now we're getting towards the tail end of the books I brought with me. These were some of the larger books that I just simply couldn't part with, but deserved a place among my backpack. And the first of those is Shadow Dark. Prior to Hurricane Helene and the disaster that wrecked Western North Carolina, I was planning on running a Shadow Dark West Marches game. That has been canceled indefinitely. But I was knee deep in the Shadow Dark book at the time that things happened, and I was just really in love with this system. Everything about it, from the character creation to the simplified two-page spread character sheets, it's just such a perfect mix of modern and old school, and if there was only one game I was going to pick, I probably would have brought Shadow Dark by itself. But I was lucky enough to be able to squeeze this backpack into my car, along with my wife, kid, two cats, and all of our other belongings. Shadow Dark made that list. Okay, last only because of the size, but certainly not least, props to Hanker and Fernail and the Runehammer team for making this list twice. Because because Crown and Skull made it into that backpack despite its beefy size. I've just had a lot of fun lately reading through this book. There's so much in here for GMs. There's so much in here for players. It's a really good mixture of rules light with a little bit of crunchiness on the player side of things, but it has such interesting and innovative concepts that I think are going to be refreshing and new to the TTRPG scene for years to come. I think this is a game that deserves a spot in anyone's survival backpack. So that's it. If you count Nave 1 and 2 as a single game, that's about eight games I was able to bring with me. And for the next several months, those might be the games I'm covering in my videos because they're literally the only ones I have in reach. Now I do have some PDFs and things like that of other books that are on my laptop that also survived, but I just simply couldn't part with some of these beautiful physical books that I think will be passed down in my family, hopefully for generations. All right, guys, that's probably going to be it for the TTRPG section of this video. Thank you to everyone for watching who made it this far. Instead of my normal goblin credo, I'll say cherish the players that are around you at your table. Sorry, I really thought I was not going to get emotional on camera, but it's been a hell of a week. Cherish those friends whom lives could change tomorrow. Enjoy those stories that you craft together and the times and the memories that you make at your table. I know they're just games. That's not what this is about. You may think, if this was a real survival situation, why would I waste my time on a bunch of books? But there are some friends that I only have because of these games. Okay, if you're not interested in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene and the things that have happened in the greater Asheville area and really all the mountain towns surrounding there, then thanks for watching. You can support by sharing one of the links below and urging people who have the means to donate in whatever way they can. Every bit helps. This situation for folks without the basic human needs is going to be ongoing for weeks, if not months. So thank you guys. Please check out those links and continue watching if you want to hear more. I just want to point out that the next part of this video is not about pity for me or my channel. It's not even about pity for me or my family. It is about the ongoing situation that we had to flee from. I think there are probably a lot of people who are seeing the news right now or seeing articles pop up and they think, oh man, a flood, that really sucks. I know those people are devastated. Floods are terrible. But this situation is so much more complex than a flood or a hurricane. I think this is one of the biggest natural disasters we've ever had in American history, and I'm going to tell you why. I'll probably show some video and shots that either I got myself or people that I know have and put them up on the screen as I discuss this. First and foremost, the need right now in Western North Carolina is clean drinking water and food. When I say that this is not a simple solution, that is the understatement of the decade. Because of the way that the flooding hit these mountain towns, some of them are literally gone. It isn't that a few houses were hit. Look at this before and after. This was an entire town that has been wiped off the map. The problem is that the, that the infrastructure for literally every modern convenience has been wiped out. It's not just that we need to turn the water back on, it's that there's no plants for electricity or running water. Sanitation is a ever-present issue along with just basic drinking water. 
one of the last messages I was able to see before the cell towers in my area were knocked out is that there was a boil water advisory. Well, no one has electricity, so no one can boil water. And on top of that, because once you're in the area, there's no communication between even rescue efforts. People can't communicate to know what to get to who or how to get it to them. Plus, these are mountain roads that have been washed out. We were going down daily to our local fire department to look at the board and see if there were any options out. Because my wife and I ran out of food and water early and we have a 16 month old child, I decided not to take the daily gamble on whether or not we'd have the supplies needed to keep her healthy and safe. In fact, if you've seen footage or video of the destruction, that's probably our neighborhood. Point being, there are still people down there who aren't even able to communicate to their families to know if they're safe or all right, or what their needs are. Now there are constant resources being sent to the area via groups like FEMA, the Red Cross, and even the National Guard. Things are going to get better. However, this is a very long-term situation. In order to replace even the basic needs of things like pipelines, power plants, and water plants, it's going to take weeks, if not months, to reinstate the structures necessary to provide those things for the greater area. There may be pockets of areas over the next few weeks that finally do get the precious water and food that they need, but even things like distribution centers for local groceries were wiped out. And without clear roads to be able to get those things to the people who need them, it's just an incredibly complex and difficult situation. My family and I were very lucky and we had an opportunity to get out and so we took it because we decided one of the best ways we could help was to not be more resources needed to the area. That, and even if it's small, I do have a platform of influence, so I can say some things that aren't being said on the news. I think if you haven't lived in or at least visited Western North Carolina, it's hard to truly understand the scope of what's happened there. I grew up in Florida, and I saw plenty of devastating hurricanes, including Katrina. And while I don't want to diminish the effect of these incredible natural disasters, I think the ongoing and lingering effects of this natural disaster could be so much worse. We were lucky. Our apartments were on a high ground area within one of the most devastated spots in town. But that meant that dozens of families were flocking to our apartment buildings in order to just get out of the water. In the discussions with friends and family online, the word that keeps coming to mind is infrastructure. The infrastructure for literally everything is gone. Transportation, food, water, electricity, trash, basic sanitation, and an incredibly wide area and number of people are currently without those things. If you have any means at all, please consider donating to one of the organizations listed in the links below. Any amount can help, no matter how small. The irrevocable devastation to my community is going to be felt for months, if not years to come. There's so much more that could be said on this topic, but honestly, I don't even have the words right now. My family and I are still going through it in some ways, and we're still reaching out and trying to find people that we love and care about that we haven't heard from. So, people who I look forward to rolling dice again with, hopefully someday soon. <sighs> All right, I'm going to end it there and stop crying on the internet, but thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all of your support. If you made it this far, thanks for listening. I'll be spending the next couple of weeks with my family and focusing on them and what our next steps are, but I'm still going to be making videos in some sense. I probably won't touch as heavily on this subject in future videos, but I'm still going to provide links until this effort is done and dealt with. If you're watching this and you're thinking, how can I support you guys? Share the links in the description below because those are the people that need your help. We're fine. I know this is going to be quite an unusual one, but it's been a roller coaster and Thanks everyone who's stuck with me through all this. I appreciate you guys so much. Leave a comment on what your survival bag would include. That's all I have for today. Appreciate you guys so much.